Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate, and I am back with another video. This is one that's on a pretty simple thing, but maybe you haven't heard of it. Maybe you have. Um, it's called Pie Hole. So, I love the name, first of all, because in the U.S. at least, we have a great saying called Shut Your Pie Hole, which means like, shut your mouth, shut up. But uh, in this case, they're taking everything and sucking it into the pie hole. Um, so, it's an ad blocking system, which is really cool. So you can run this thing on a Raspberry Pi, which is awesome, but you don't have to. You can run this on any kind of server. You can run it on your local machine at your house. If you have an old laptop or desktop laying around that will run a you know, fairly recent version of some of these different operating systems, you, you can run Pi Hole, and then you use that as your DNS system so that you can point your different machines at it or point your router at it, and then everything you request off the Internet goes through that, and as stuff comes in, it starts looking for the ads, and it removes those ads from those pages that you're trying to load. So it's pretty awesome, and I'll show you kind of how it works. I've gone through this once. It was pretty seamless, so let's see if it happens the second time. You know, they always say first time is luck, two times is skill. So let's see if I've got some skill here. So when you come to the Pi Hole webpage, this is what you see. Um, you don't have to actually do anything here. You can either do this as a Docker container if you want to go through that process, uh, or you can just install it natively. So I'm just going to install it natively because it's really simple. Um, so whenever you click on this button, you basically get this page. It'll tell you the prerequisites and it'll tell you what operating systems they support and in what architectures so if you have ARM or Pi you might want a Ubuntu or a Raspbian something like that if it's AMD 64 you know any of these if you have an i386 so a 32-bit machine then you definitely want to go with the Debian version uh, because that's the only thing that'll run Pi Hole on 32-bit so just kinda of keep that in mind uh, once you once you get kinda of that stuff down so I'm gonna zoom this back out just a little bit um, just so that you can see the menu over here on the menu if you'll just click on the installation link right here it brings you up to this page so I'll zoom it back up and right here at the very top is this simple script that you run and basically it goes out and says hey give me the script from this page and run it in my terminal so I'm going to keep that highlighted and we're going to go over here to DigitalOcean so you can see the one that I set up previously I've actually got my machine pointed at it right now and I'm going to go to create droplet we'll give that a second to load we're gonna do Ubuntu we're gonna stay on standard and we're gonna jump way over here to the left and we're gonna pick five dollar droplet again pick somewhere that's close to you so the first one I did was was New York this time I'll do San Francisco it like I said doesn't really matter um, if you want to pick another country you can even do that it's totally up to you where you where you put these things um, as we go down, I'm not going to do any of the additional options, but I am going to use my SSH keys, and I want to use both of these just in case I want to access it from different machines. And then I'm going to give this a name so that we can tell which one it is. Something like that. Real simple. And then I'll click on Create Droplet. So as always, this is going to spin up a Ubuntu server. It's going to spin it up on that $5 machine. Um, it's more than enough to run this, and you'll see that it's it's very simple to get going. Um, as soon as that comes up, we're going to grab that IP address, and we're not even going to set up a DNS name this time because this is actually our DNS server, so it's going to work out better this way. We're just going to use the IP address. So we'll give this just a minute to finish creating our droplet. It's moving along. It usually takes 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Uh, you know, Sometimes you'll get a minute and a half. No idea why it's different, but hey, it happens. So I'm going to hit copy just to grab that IP address. And I'm going to go down here and grab my terminal. And I'm going to do SSH root at. And then I'm just going to paste that IP address in there. It may not even be up yet. Sometimes I'm a little bit too quick and it's like giving me the IP, but it's actually not ready. It looks like that's going to be the case. If that happens, just hit the up arrow key. Give it about five seconds and then try it again. And it'll probably be ready to go. There it is. And we're logged in. So, first thing I always do is apt update and apt upgrade dash y. We just want to get those updates and upgrades out of the way. That way everything's up to date when we start adding our software. So, I'm going to let this run. I'll fast forward through it and then you guys can continue on with me. Okay, so we've updated that droplet and we've rebooted it just to get the kernel changes in there. No big deal, pretty easy. Now we're just gonna go grab this command and you can just copy it out here right at the right. 
And then we're going to go right back down here. And we're going to paste that in. And we're just going to run it. It'll do its thing and it'll fill up the screen with some different stuff that it's checking. So you can see as it goes that it gets little check marks, ones, things like that. It'll go grab some packages and it's going to start kind of installing those things. And it's going to give you some instructions and kind of run you through a wizard here in the incursus type terminal. So as you read these things, just go along with it. When you're ready, hit enter to accept. It says PyHole is free. And it's a server. So it needs a single IP address, a static IP address. This is important. You do have to have a static IP address in order for this to work really well. You can do it with DHCP, and if your server is really good about always reassigning the same DHCP address, then that's okay. But if it's not, you really want to set this as a static, ad static address, because once it's set, that's what you're pointing all of your devices to to use this for your DNS. And if that address changes, it's not going to point to this machine anymore, and then you're going to have problems. So it kind of says, here's all the different options you have for DNS providers. So this is kind of like, it does a lot of things, but the actual DNS is handled by somebody else. So I like OpenDNS. I've always been happy with their service, but they have quite a few here. So you can just go pick the one that you like the best. If you have custom one, you can set that as well. I'm just going to stay with OpenDNS. I'm just going to hit space to make sure it's selected. I'll hit tab to go to OK and then hit enter. So here it's telling you, here's all the blacklists. So if you know one of these blacklists is going to block a site that you like to go to, you should probably undo it. But if not, just accept the defaults, hit tab so you get to the OK, and then hit Enter. And then finally, IPv4, IPv6, I would say leave this alone. There's no reason to turn off either one of them, in my opinion. If you have problems for some reason with IPv6 being on, you could go back, rerun this, and turn it off. But I'd say just leave it alone. So hit tab. Hit enter for OK. And then finally it says, hey, here's the IP address that I see on this machine. Is this what you want to keep? And if you don't, you need to tell it that and then go change that IP address. I'm good with this. This is the static IP address that I get from DigitalOcean. There's no reason for me to change it. So I'm going to say yes. And then finally it's telling me, hey, what I just told you a while ago, your router could change your address because it's DHCP. You know, it seems like it's DHCP. You may want to change that. But I know that it's not going to change, so I'm okay. If you're afraid it might change, you should definitely think about going and fixing this. So finally, do I want to install the web admin interface? Yes, I do. So make sure that's on on, and then hit tab. You should have a little asterisk next to on, and then hit OK. And then finally, this part, you want to make sure this is set to on as well, unless you already have a web server that's running that can display the pie hole stuff. I don't, so I'm just going to hit OK. And finally, do you want to log queries? Yeah, we'll just leave that on so we can see the stuff that's happening on the system. And I'm just going to leave it on show everything. It's fine. So now it's going to go and it's going to do a little bit more setup. It's going to check a few things. It's going to pull down some more packages based on the answers that we gave here through this little wizard. And then it's going to do some installation. And it'll take just a couple of minutes and it should be pretty much ready to go here in just a minute. So it's letting us know now that it's pretty much ready. This is some important information, so don't just dismiss this screen. It's very important. You have a default password that it sets for you right here. That's an important thing. So you want to copy that password, which I just did. Now it's telling you this is the IP address of your new DNS server. Great. This, If you set up a domain, you can get to the admin interface this way. If you didn't, you'll get to it through the IP address slash admin. So that's the way we're going to go. So I'll just click on that it's going to open up here in Firefox and you can kind of see right off the bat here's our stats without even being logged in but we're going to go log in and I need that default password that was set so I'm just going to paste it in there and no I don't need it to save right now now once you've logged in the first time you can actually go change that password so you should have all this information if you if nothing else take a screenshot before you drop this screen off um, so here you can do a simple command to change that password so it's not the default password. So pi hole dash a and then space dash p. And then you're going to type in the password you want. So I messed it up. So it doesn't like that. I removed the password. That's probably bad. I'm going to do it again.
There we go. So now we've got a new password set, and I'll go log out. And then I'm going to log back in just to make sure my new password has been taken. All right, so we're back in, no problem. Now you can tell the browser to save it if you want to. So we can see here kind of what it's doing. It's just a DNS server, so I don't really have anything pointed to the server. Um, so there really shouldn't be a lot happening. I mean, there's a little bit going on here, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to update my stuff to actually point at the server. So first I'm just going to do this machine, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So first I want to make sure that my WireGuard interface is down. And it is. That's good. Because we'll do WireGuard here in just a minute. So first I'm going to go open up my network settings. And I'm going to say edit my connections. And I'm going to pick my Wi-Fi network address. And I'm going to go over here to IPv4 in this case. And I'm going to get rid of this one, which is my original Pi-hole DNS. And I'm going to take this address. And I'm just going to paste it in here. Now, if you're using Windows or if you're using Mac, this is a little bit different, but you should still be able to access your network settings and change your DNS servers to be something manual. So what I tell mine to do is give me an automatic address for the IP of my machine, but let me set the DNS. This is usually a setting you can set on Windows and Mac, so don't get frustrated if you don't see it right away. Just kind of poke around and you'll find it, but it is usually there. Let me double check. I do have a colon in front. That's not going to work. So let me get rid of that and make sure there's no extra spaces in front. And then we'll just save. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to also turn off my network connection. I'll just let it disconnect for a second, and then I'll reconnect it. And that way I just feel like, yeah, I know that it should be using the right DNS. And... Reconnect it. There it is. Okay, everything should be back up and running. So now what we can do is we can actually just take another Firefox browser. I can refresh this page, I hope. Move back to home. Let's see if I can get ready to come back. Oh, there we go. So, I just found this page on Qora that has, like, what are some really bad pages with ads. And one of them looked really interesting to me, so let me find that link again right here. Um, so we'll click on this link, and we'll just kind of watch and see if we see anything happen over here as this page tries to load. We may have to refresh our interface here. Yeah, there we go. So we just blocked from 27 all the way up to 261 by loading up this page. Um, if we refresh... There you go, you can see it jump up again. So it tries to load quite a few ads there. Um, and if we go again, it may have more than it looks like. Nope, that's good, okay. So we can see that it's doing that. Now, if you wanna confirm that you're using that, you can do this command on your machine. So N NMCLI, um, well, I don't remember it. All right, so now if you wanna see the DNS that you're using, you can do nmcli dev show and then pipe it and do grep and then dns in capitals and you can see right here here's the ip address that we have set up for our dns server using pihole so we know that that's what it's using okay we can clear that what we want to do now is i want to show what it looks like when i do this on my phone for my router so give me just one minute and i'll get my phone set up so I use Eero here at home because it gives me a really good mesh network. Um, I've had it for a couple years. It's really great. Uh, they do not pay me to say that. I say it because I think it's really great. I have a, a decent sized house and I'm, I have an office in the back outside where I have to go far away. And I don't have a real good way to run cable out there. So I use uh, Eero to actually make my house completely covered. My yard is completely covered and it's almost an acre. And then my office that way is covered really well. And then I've got... Uh, the boxes where I can plug in wires out, out there for things that need Ethernet. So it's really great. Um, and in order to set that up, I can go in here to my Eero settings and hit advanced. And then I can go down here and I'll see DNS options um, right here. And then as you can see, so there's 
this top option uh, right here at the very top where I can use my ISP's DNS that it just pulls automatically whenever you connect your ISP. But you also have the option to select custom DNS and right below that you can see I can set my primary DNS. Now I can set my secondary DNS for this new server I set up but that primary DNS is the first server I set up and I'll show that back up here um, on the actual computer screen so you can see kind of what it's looking like and that's 206.19.189.200 if I type this correctly dot 162 and then slash admin I didn't type it right. I left out a one. There we go. So you can see I did some testing with it earlier and it's still what is being used by my current DNS on my home router. So this is pretty nice. It's given me a lot of information. I can kind of see what's being blocked. I can log in, log out. I can make changes here through the, the user interface. It's really a nice setup. So if I switch back over, you can see the difference here. So this one's a little bit newer. I haven't used it as much and I don't have this one set up on my actual router for my home. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now let's say that I use something like WireGuard, which I do, and I've done videos on WireGuard in the past. It's a VPN solution that uses SSH tunneling uh, for faster connections and security. Um, it's pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a learning curve for doing things that are more advanced, but it's really, really easy to get set up initially if you're just wanting to get set up to use a VPN. So I'm gonna go and set up my WireGuard interface and We'll do sudo nano etc. And don't hate me for using nano. I know there's a lot of Vim and VI guys out there. I use those too, but nano's just easy sometimes. WireGuard and wg0.conf and authenticate. So here you can see I've got that same DNS set up for WireGuard, but I'll change it to our new one here because that's the one that I want to test out. So it's 167. dot one seven two dot one one nine dot one eight all right so that should be correct so we'll save it and then we'll go back out and we'll do sudo wg just to show that it's still not up now we'll do wg quick up to wg zero all right it's up and running and it should be using our dns that we just set up so if we do that There we go, we can see that it is, which is great. So now if I go and travel to my favorite little web page here, and I may have to refresh everything because it did just switch interfaces. So I'll refresh that one, I'll refresh our Qura page here. And then we'll go and click on our link. And you can see it changing as we go along here. So the more that we visit this page, the more it blocks ads on the page. And there's other pages with lots of ads. So don't, don't feel like it's just blocking the ads on this page. It's just this one happens to have quite a few ads. Um, so it's pretty, pretty handy to have something like Pi-hole. It does block a lot of ads for you. Um, it's not going to block like the ads at the beginning of YouTube videos. It's not going to block uh, ads that, that, that are not really part of the page load but actually simply laid into the page like actually part of the page I mean there's only so much that, a, that an ad blocker can do and there are ad blockers you can put on your browsers too don't get me wrong but this seems really cool it's just an overall kind of catch-all system that you can set up on your home network set up on DigitalOcean whatever you want to do and, and let it sit out there and just be a DNS server for you so I hope you enjoyed this if you like it please like and subscribe and if you'd like to see more about something like this or if you have some information that I missed uh, let me know and I'll do an update. So thanks and talk to you next time.